Hey everyone, welcome to the Saturday evening Game On Daily talk show. I'm your host Gaz, co-owner of Game On Daily, and we have a great show for you today. I'm so, so, so excited for this one. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Me and David have been trying to work this out. It's going to be a sick one. Um, if, you, if this is the first time you're joining us, uh, just know that this stream is brought to you by GameOnDaily.com, which is the best-in-class news aggregation platform out there made for content creators. So if you just get, want to get all your gaming news in one place, or if you're a budding journalist slash you know a youtuber or streamer we've given you the tools to put your content out there um so yeah do check our game on daily.com before we get on to talk about our amazing guests let me introduce the co-founder and the co-host of game on daily the other co-host asa <laughs> walker how are you doing sir i'm <laughs> weird i'm missing from my own stream um yeah i'm okay i um, wasn't expecting to talk having some minor technical difficulties but i'm really really grateful honestly for the opportunity to to congratulate david and by extension his whole team on what they've achieved over recent days but i'm sure we'll get into that as we go on yeah no absolutely um next gen is upon us uh and hopefully we can talk more about the games or more david can talk more about the games i'm sure I'm aware that ndas still are a thing uh, so hopefully uh we can get as much disclosure as possible but uh without further ado let me introduce the technical director behind Dirt 5, David Springate. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me, guys. I've been looking forward to this as well. And uh, yeah, we've been talking about it for a couple of weeks now, haven't, you? haven't we? Uh, you were kind enough to invite me on the show. And um, I was saying, well, you know, we're, we're trying to ship the game. I'm a little busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some stuff going on. But uh, yeah, no, it's great to be with you. Great to be able to, to say Dirt 5 is... It's almost fully out, almost. Almost, yeah. I didn't realize, actually, because I've been so busy playing it, I didn't realize, wait, hold on, there's still the PlayStation 5 version to contend with. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But, and thank you again for making, you know, the time to see us. I know it must be insane uh, on your end. It certainly was last week. I'm actually on holiday at the moment. So, I'm oh, nice. still <laughs> at home. Uh, but, you know, we'd made our arrangements and I realized, oh, wait, this is right in the middle of my time off. But I'm like, I... I it's not exactly a hardship to meet up and talk about Dirt 5, right? So Exactly. No, I know we're, we're very excited. Either way, we're, st we're still really grateful for you turning up. Um, last but not least is the gentleman uh, that we've had on here previously, and he's been kind enough to invite me on the RDX podcast, the prominent Xbox influencer, dealer gaming. Sir, how are you? That word, influencer. Quit it. <laughs> we're all just people with microphones, and uh, thanks for having me on. Asa, looking fine as ever. <laughs> of course, you're always here doing the magic. And uh, again, thanks to, to Codemasters and, of course, um, the gentleman we have on the show today, uh, who is the technical director of Dirt 5. I've been playing this game for like a month. And yeah, um, yeah I mean, I got some pretty, pretty cool questions. Gaz has got some good stuff for you, and I can't wait to get into it. Yeah, let's get into it. Everyone in chat, um, thank you for joining us. Please hit that like and share button. Let's get more people in. And just bear in mind that we will try our best to read your super chats. We may just park those to the end depending on the flow of the conversation but uh yeah this is a great chance for you to ask david any questions or dealer uh, so yeah let's go straight into the topic so well first of all i think congratulations are in order i think i'm repeating what asa has said surely uh you and the team must be relieved at least par partially because the release half done isn't it well you know um this is this is strange times in, in game development so Typically, um, all of the stories that you hear about game development are not usually overblown. Trying to ship a video game is, is really difficult. And um, there's a lot of late nights, usually a lot of pizzas, a lot of putting on weight towards the end of the project. I bet if you went back and looked at earlier interviews with me, I'm probably thinner. <laughs> <laughs> but, <It's> okay. <laughs> we all are. We all were. <laughs> yeah, I guess the, the um, COVID, it feels like, and this is obviously a really tiny, insignificant byproduct of such an awful thing, but it, it has robbed us of that feeling of, of being a team that has shipped the product together, I think, um, because we're all so far apart from one another. Um, so you'd normally be in the office really late at night going, is this game any good? I just don't know. And um, trying to hammer out some multiplayer sessions late at night and catch those last minute bugs. But it's so weird and difficult to ship a game during pandemic situations and things like online testing that was 
that was a nightmare because yeah, you normally say. have this like testing suite in the studio a bunch of desks with dev kits on and we can just all pile down there and play multiplayer and if someone crashes or something you can you can get up you can debug it you can look at it and trying to herd people together online over we use microsoft teams um trying to get people together for that is, is just really logistically difficult um so i tweeted out the other day that for many members of cheshire studio this is their first ever video game to have worked on and to have done it under these circumstances to have done it in a little over 18 months a launch title it's i'm very proud of them they've, they've done a really great job so I'm, I'm really really pleased with what they've achieved do you know absolutely should, that absolutely it should be but um I was going to ask you actually it's kind of good segue to the next question you know how have you the 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 critics have really received this positively um <laughs> so it's like you've done a great job or for all the people who you know who who's their first time doing this do you feel like wait hold on if it wasn't for covid we could have done this and that or you know were there were there things that you material things that you think you left out from dirt five that you would be there oh man the, the list is long so, <laughs> so Oof. got to be careful about how I answer this because because <laughs> you're dirt six <laughs> you might come back right um, yeah, yeah. we we had a long list of things we wanted to do in dirt five and and the process for this is um, we we have a chart that looks a lot like a dartboard and we have the things in the middle of the chart that are we cannot ship the game without this feature okay and as you go further away from the center of it they become <laughs> things that we want but they're not essential for the, the core experience of what we were aiming for with Dirt 5. Mm. And as you go along through development, we, we try to cut features as quickly as possible so that you don't end up wasting time on something, um, getting it half finished and then shoving it in. Now, that meant that we were really quickly able to say, look, we know, we looked at the market and we said, okay, well, there isn't something um, accessible pad first sofa Friday night with a beer and a pizza kind of play. Yeah. Uh, if I want to play something really serious, there's loads of games that do that, and a lot of the best ones are made by Codemasters. Yeah. But I didn't see anything that was doing what we wanted to do, really. Um, so you guys are probably way better at Dirt 5 than I am, and you're probably way better at racing games than I am. But this is a game built for people who aren't great at racing games. Yeah, um, somebody... really? Because I'm terrible at this. <laughs> <laughs> but this um, is a game built for people who, um, who they really like Mario Kart, but they want more than Mario Kart, but they don't want to go as far as Dirt Rally. Because Dirt Rally is an awesome game. Yeah. I'm but rubbish. <laughs> but, you're flying, but you're flying off that cliff a little. Too often <laughs> as a new racer, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess um, trying to work out what were the things that we really wanted to deliver um, was was built around that audience thinking what's what's going to appeal to them what's going to keep their attention what's going to make them happy so um there was a lot of there was a lot of fear surrounding split screen because we have four player split screen in dirt five and um obviously we didn't know there was going to be a global pandemic and whether people were going to be able to play split screen or not <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. the idea of having people over to your house right now is uh, obviously slimmer but so that's something you guys like cut because of the pandemic no no we've still well, we got still oh, okay. but, but it was one of those features where the team were thinking this requires a lot of work um split screen mm -hmm. is one of those features that a lot of games don't take and it's not just because of performance but because it touches so many different things to do with ui and user experience and multiple profiles um all that stuff so we really needed to be bought into who that audience is um and i felt <laughs> sometimes one tweet one message really validates what you're doing and i gave an, a, an early code to a friend just before shipping um and he, he came back to me, he's got four kids, and he says, this is the best of the racing games we've played. And he gets all of the stuff from Codemasters because he's, he's like a test bed for me. And um, he get, comes back to me and says, this, this is just great. We're loving it. This is our favorite racing game now. Yeah. And, and I think, well, I'm sure that's just them being nice a little bit, but uh, I'm, I'm pleased to have that, that feedback validated. Um, was that because was that of the split screen? Yeah, they really love the split screen because they've got so many kids. <clears throat> 
Um, so that was great. That, that but that split screen was quite squarely near or near the middle of that dartboard of yours then, was it? Because that's what... No, I can't remember, but I know that Playgrounds was. So oh. Playgrounds was definitely a key feature because um, one of the challenges with a racing game is the turnaround time for assets. So trying to make a new track might take, I don't know, four man months. Um, that's a number I'm just plucking out of the air, but I know that we don't, you can't turn them around in a week or two, right? Mm -hmm. And so a car as well, it's not just a case of actually building the car and painting the textures and doing the material information, and making sure that it's optimal. You've got to speak to the licensing department and you've got to talk to the manufacturer. You've got to get all the damage models signed off for that car and what colors can that car be available in? Um, so I'm not going to tell you which manufacturer, but there was one manufacturer that particularly didn't want their car in pink and that causes <laughs> a problem and, and it's understandable. They want to protect their, um, their brand and all that stuff. And that's, that's totally respectable. How but does that work? Uh, you can paint the cars though. How does that work? They're protecting their brand against pink. Asa. <laughs> well, but I can see these. I can paint the car myself in dirt. Is there, is this a particular brand? Am I going to recognize it and go, ah, the painting well, features the are locked off here. Paint, it's yeah. them. I'm going to back away. I'm backing away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, these things are complicated, right? So trying to add new content is, is really difficult, but playground is a feature that lets the, the player make the, the content they want to make. Yeah. Um, and it allows us to have more life coming into racing. Um, more new content without us having to do content drops all of the time. Now, obviously we are going to do content drops and no, I'm not going to tell you about any of that, <laughs> but uh, they are already in progress. Um, but yeah, you, you still need stuff feeding through all of the time, week by week, um, when we can't deliver new cars and new tracks. Mm. So the optimizations you've done on the base game, basically you're like, hey, a lot of that work, all that feeds over into the, the extra stuff that the team are building it assets for all that because you're the lead technical guy all the work you've done in the base game will kind of already pay dividends in the expansion oh yeah 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 so um in terms of performance the we, we lock down things like budgets so um we know exactly how much a car should take out of a frame so then when an artist makes a new car we can run it through our tests and we can say whether it's within budget or not and if it breaks the budget, we just send it back and say, you need to optimize this car. Um, and the same goes to the tracks. We, we, um, we have like an AI program that runs a car, uh, runs a camera around the track that will generate a heat map for us to tell us the frame rate on a particular console. Uh, then the heat map gets given to the artists to tell them these are the problem areas where you need to really hone your frame rate. Uh, you need to look at what's going on here. Is it that your materials are too expensive? You've got too many verts, you got, Maybe you've got something like this really beautiful Vista and it looks really great to the artist, but the frame rate is just bombing out. And so mm -hmm. what are we going to do to deliver that vision within that frame of time? So That's really these, interesting. Um, these tools that you're talking about, these are specifically shared across Codemasters or in particular to your studio? So uh, it's a complex question. So Codemasters Cheshire is... Um, is all of this, all of the studios at Codemasters really stand on their own feet. So there's, there's code sharing, there's some tools sharing, there's a, definitely a lot of knowledge sharing. Um, but the engine used by Codemasters Cheshire, the tools and everything is completely independent of say Dirt Rally or uh, Grid or F1. Um, but the coming wheel support for Dirt 5 is actually going to be one of those code sharing things. because. Uh, we didn't we've never shipped a pc game before from codemaster cheshire and i'm sure the fans have got something to say about that because i know there's been some some optimization issues with that um but we are trying our best we're, we're going to get there we're not going to leave the fans just with a version that they're not happy with but yeah we're we're going to be just working through the issues and making sure they get what they want um mm -hmm. you uh just uh we were actually gonna i was gonna touch on you mentioned playground um mm. and I find that interesting that that was on your squarely at the top of, or near the top, maybe of the manifesto. What was uh -huh. the what was the intention behind that? I mean, what was the drive behind, no pun intended, uh, for <laughs> behind playground? So uh, one of the guys had been working on a, a technical demo, and he 
it was one of those moments where back when we could all be in the studio, um, a guy named Paul Fruin had made this demo of being able to drive through gates and park up and set little challenges and things like that. And we were having good fun with it. And it all looked, you know, rubbish. It was all built out of boxes and tri like really big triangles. And you still had a good looking car, but we only had one car at the time. And, um, and I remember saying, well, wouldn't it be great if we had an editor? And so another guy, Stuart Mackay, you know, one, of, one of the great programmers on my team, he, he worked on an editor very quickly. Um, and I started putting together some really bad services for sharing uh, to a database. Um, and then we ran a few days in the studio where we made the team sit down and build playgrounds and share them to the server. And then we would go in and play them. They were all rubbish, but we all had a great time. Um, <laughs> And we kept doing that and we were realizing that this, this was a lot of fun and we know that there are other products out there that do this kind of thing with Trackmania, but it's a bit more zany than what we're doing. Um, okay. But we, we were just thinking, well, we're having fun. So the game should be about having fun. If we're having fun, I firmly believe that that's going to deliver a product that just will be fun in the end. Um, yeah. If I'm not enjoying working on the game or making the game, it's probably not going to be great. Yeah. Uh, so Playgrounds it kind of rose to the top or the center of our board because we just enjoyed it. Um, yeah. And it became something that allowed us to go, okay, well, how does this deliver on all of the different uh, pillars of the product? Um, Cause when you sit down to make a video game, rather than thinking, I've got this great idea, I'll go and make it. That, that is a good start, especially if you're say an indie developer. Yeah. But when, you're working with larger teams you have to think well who is this game for and how are we going to market that product to them uh, and what is that what is it that that person's looking for so you draw up a load of product pillars and think well what are the key elements of this title um and we looked at the technology that we had so very early on we had um this demo in china where you could drive around and you could see puddles dynamically growing when it rained and freeze over when it turned to snow and we had seasons changing um all that stuff and we can still do that in the game the it becomes difficult to communicate those ideas to the player um but yeah we, we had a lot of the technology almost in place for what we needed when we started dirt five we were in a really strong position out the gate um in fact if, if someone wants to see some of that cool stuff i'd recommend jumping into arcade mode, picking something like um, Tijuca Forest in Brazil and switching the, the timeline to something like rain. And then you can switch to time 60 time um, and put it in say dusk. And you can see the whole day night cycle change whilst you're going around your three laps and you can see puddles shrink and grow. And mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome. I, I love that stuff. That's a, that's gonna a do beautiful a track too. A really good looking track. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I know, that now that you mentioned, see, I'm gonna I'm gonna disprove one thing that you said in this interview, and that's that we're Oof. any good at the game. So I'm gonna leave some of the footage running of me playing it for anyone that uh, <laughs> that doesn't know really what knows. Dirt Five looks like. It's just gonna be running in this window for a little while while we carry on talking. <laughs> Is it the one where we're flashing? <laughs> and then you get flagged yep, by Code Master. <laughs> <laughs> um, whoever, um, David, I wanted to ask, who created that ice track? What's his address, and where can I find it? <laughs> Which, which ice track? <laughs> the one where you have to um, just, it's the, um, you have to go around. It's one of the first tracks, the drift track. You're the one in the trailer, right? Yeah, in the trailer, yeah. yeah I've so done that twice. One, uh, one Roosevelt Bridge. All, Roosevelt uh, Bridge, that's the one. Yeah. A lot of the New York ones uh, are frozen. I, I will not give you his name. <laughs> uh, I, you don't understand. I tried to get three stamps on that. I was doing well until that one, and I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I I'm that. in the same boat. So um, I think it's fair to say that we've seen a lot of criticism about ice racing and about sprint racing. Um, about sprint racing, I kind of want to say people just need to get good. But <laughs> the ice racing, we will be No, the, the sprint tracks, um, AI is too good at that. It is too good. Um, so hard. I can hold my own in sprint, but it's one of the few ones I can hold my own. Um, you have to do a lot of counter steer. You've got to not uh, hold down the accelerator when you're turning. But uh, it's not really. If you're like Asa, you do 16 flips and yeah, land on your <laughs> tires somehow. <laughs> this was a good yeah, starting point for the video. Just drift. Okay. Just drift the whole way around. 
And then as you do tons of counter steer because all the wheels are different sizes and you're constantly being pulled to the right. Okay. So do tons of counter steer and as you straighten up, then just put your accelerator. Uh, okay, That's I was doing it wrong. <laughs> I was doing the opposite of what you just said. Mine is putting, obviously, put the accelerator down on the straights. I hated those sprints because mm -hmm. I just couldn't do it. I'm just really bad at drifts anyway. Um, but <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you, do you play the game in cheat, ma cheat mode, which is third person or cockpit view? <laughs> Oh, th cheat mode is third person. Uh, <laughs> I actually play, I flip between, um, I use bumper cam primarily because I play in 120 FPS at home and I want to feel it. Um, and I, I really like that in the bumper cam. I've yeah. been using bump, um, bonnet cam a little bit more because I've been playing with some friends the last couple of nights and they've been saying, you got to check out more, more bonnet cam because you get more of a sense of how wide the vehicle is. Um, in testing in the studio, I use third person view. Um, I'm very much a creature of habit. So when I'm testing the game, I'm always using the aerial nomad. I'm always in, uh, one of the China tracks. I can't remember exactly which one, what it's called. It's, it's like a muscle memory thing. I just go through the menus, pick the one I need. Um, and then I watch all the different tests that I have going on there and play it. I have this big 55 inch next to my TV, next to my desk in the office. So I play it on that. Wicked. Um, I was going to uh, um, another question on 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 the tracks. Uh, with, so actually, you mentioned that China. But that's your favorite track, is it? That's my test track. Um, I can do that pretty well. I, w I wouldn't. I don't want to say I'm good because I've seen the way that the community play. Um, but my my favorite track is Tajuka Forest. Uh, uh, I, I love like, that track oh, I love because it. Uh, if you set the, the weather to dynamic, um, you get these really nice low suns with the sun streaking across the water and it looks really great in the when the, the track gets really wet and really muddy. Um, I think we've got a mud update coming. I'm not sure I should have said that. <laughs> uh -huh. We've got some stuff coming. <laughs> oh, mud update. Ooh, okay. Well, there you go. Andy, you're broken. You can't, can't get fired. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah asa you're, you're gonna ask uh on question uh, we've got questions internally sorry we're gonna say number eight um but i was well i'll, I'll ask asa unless you've not got those in front of you i do not have those in front of me okay well you're you're saying oh 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 no i do yeah so um yeah question that i don't know there's a relatively small selection of games across the consoles at the moment being launched. So there's a, a small handful of games and it just so happens there's another rally game releasing, mm. um, WRC 9. Does that hurt your feelings or do you just have like a shared passion with that studio that you you're obviously have some some drives towards you know, the different kind of games? So there's leans more towards, I guess, if you were going to put it up against a Codemasters game, it would be more the Dirt Rally games rather than this one. But um, there is a clear overlap. How does that? Fair is it an unfortunate coincidence? <laughs> uh, to be honest, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, I think the W. It looks like a great game. It's a very different game. Mm -hmm. um, and, and going back to kind of what I was talking about earlier, that you you have to think about who you're making the game for. So, um, WRC Nine looks like a, a really fantastic game, but it's not meeting the same people that are going to want to play Dirt Five. It doesn't offer the same kind of experiences. And I think WRC9 is a game, I think, that looks like it's aiming for realism. It's looking for a really authentic experience. Um, I can't speak to whether that it, it delivers that or not. That's, that's up to someone else to talk about. But Dirt 5 is about taking reality and turning it up to 11. So that's why HDR is really important and having all the weather stuff is really important. And, and I need it to be a game that almost everyone can just pick up a pad and make it round the track and have a really great time. And it is aggressive. It is bumping cars up against each other. And yeah, some crazy things happen. Cars flip and things. And none of that is by accident. It's all for the, the theatrics of it. Um, we want to see drama. We want to see um, a different thing within that authentic race experience. Um, so no, I, I'm not particularly worried by it. Uh, mm -hmm. You made a great game. That's what you aim to do. It's moved. Thank you so much for the five dollars super chat. He says he's having a blast with Dirt Five on Series X. He imagines he uh, the image quality and on quality mode is so impressive. 
three jewels are underrated. I'm loving this. It's a legit surprise. Good job. So that's from kids. Uh, that's it's kind of something we could ask about real quick. There's an image quality because uh, again, I've been playing the game for like several weeks, and throughout that period, there have been several patches, right? Because you guys are updating the builds. And uh, there, there was uh, now. There's an image quality mode and a resolution mode. That's right. What is the difference between those two? Because it doesn't have a description. But I was curious about that. I'm glad that you asked me that. Uh, so I actually wrote up a full post on Reset Era today about this um, because people have been asking, "What, what is the deal with this?" And uh, if you've been playing previous builds, uh, which you said you did, um, a lot of this is a kind of holdover from Onrush. So mm. we previously had a quality mode and a frame rate mode or performance mode, something like that. Um, and the idea would have been you pick one because you want it to look nice and you pick the other one because you want it to run fast. And to only speak about next gen platforms, because actually it gets more confusing because they, it's not called resolution mode on the current gen platforms. So we'll only talk about next gen for a minute, if that's okay. Yeah. So we gave a build to Digital Foundry and I, I think that was probably one of the most nerve-wracking things during development for me because um, early on we went all in and said we're going to do 120 frames per second and at the moment when I said that with Major Nelson we had not made 120 FPS. <laughs> um, uh -oh. The reason that I could say that is because statistically looking at the, the facts there was no reason we couldn't do it. Um, yeah. cause you look, could look at the frame times and go, yeah, I, I'll go back into the office next week, turn it on. It will be okay. It wasn't okay, but we got there in the end. Uh, but I gave a build to digital foundry and it came back. They said, you know, this game 4k 60, it's got two 4k 60 modes and 120 Hertz mode. What, why do we need two 4k 60 modes? Like we've got one that's trying to be more 4k more of the time than the other one and the other one that's got very slightly better lighting and shadowing and i i got back to um a microsoft teams meeting i don't want to say back to the studio because as much as back to the studio is nowadays hmm. um and the guy said to me why why are we doing that in fact and i said yeah well, i don't know i thought it was what you wanted and well we thought it was what you wanted and so we had a quick chat and said well look at the sentiment of what's being said about dirt five because all of the things on twitter the memes and all that stuff that does not pass us by uh so we saw that really ugly picture that someone posted of playgrounds that went around and there was one with craig from halo infinite in a car <laughs> and and um you know we we chuckle along as well yeah. but we were saying it seems that some people really care about having a game that is 4k and 60. they really care about it if that's you pick resolution mode if you want something that looks really pretty, we didn't take anything away from the Digital Foundry build. Because what we did was said, the mode that the Digital Foundry saw that was called quality, we optimized it so that we didn't need the middle one. So we threw that away and renamed what they, called, what they had was quality to resolution. The new quality mode, we went in, optimized some more, turned some more things up to 11, dropped the resolution a little bit. So mm. if you want something that looks nice really great and you care about that the most pick quality obviously there's 120 hertz mode which we renamed to high frame rate mode that's just because not everybody knows what 120 hertz means if you don't hang out on gaming forums or you don't right. hang out on av forums you're not necessarily going to know what that means so, so in a few weeks you've gone in and optimized and added more settings and just yeah. turned it into two modes yeah yep Got uh it. So we're continuing to optimize now. I was just on reset area just before the uh, before we started um, because someone was asking about a performance issue on PS5 and I'm saying, I'm, I'm sorry about that, first of all. And actually there'll be a patch. Uh, it's I can't give an exact date for patches, but we have a new patch coming for Dirt 5 right now. Um, it has to go to platform holders and sit with their certification teams for a while. And then when they come back, they go straight out to live. Um, but obviously they're all really busy right now because there's a lot of games going through certification for patches. So Yeah. And in your defense, it, it's a pandemic. And I, I don't think there's any game day one that's going to, you know, can say, hey, we've, we've gotten 100 billion percent of performance out of the boxes and, and everything's perfect, uh, you know, because of everything that's going on. I mean, again, it, it runs really well from my experience right now. 
thank you. Um, I think the there is a lot of stuff left on the table. So mm -hmm. to talk about next gen, Dirt Five is I'm I'm pleased with it. We we got the obviously we had like eighteen months to make the game. We did not have PlayStation Five and Xbox Scarlet dev kits at that point when we started. So halfway through development, you start getting early prototypes of hardware. They have bugs, they have flaws, things don't work, they crash a lot, they don't have all of the performance yet. Mm -hmm. And so very near the end, do you start getting the the close to final prototypes? Um, then, so to think that you would be able to squeeze the box of, of everything that it could possibly do, it's just, it's just not feasible to be able to do a full launch day. Yeah. Um, but looking at the architecture of what these things can do, it's going to be a lot of fun in the next couple of years. It's going to be really interesting. You guys <laughs> and there are tools on top of that, correct? So, I mean, as these SDKs update, you know, these performance and, and I'm here behind the scenes and have been here for a little bit that, that Xbox's SDKs are really early and uh, there's a lot more performance from the box that sit in your house right now to basically be available to, develop, to developers over the next year uh, on top of a lot of the stuff like velocity and, and VRS and machine learning, all this other stuff they can do. So I think the for us, um, the big challenge is figuring out how, how do you make use of this architecture within your game engine itself. So the easy win for us was um, simultaneous multi-threading on the CPU. That was, that was a really easy win. Um, for those who don't know what that is and are like, what did he just say? Yeah. Um, this is commonly called hyper-threading on a PC. Okay. But what that is, is um, let's say that you buy a quad-core PC and it has hyper-threading. Um, Windows will, it will show you that you've actually got eight cores. Now, that's not entirely true because in hyper-threading, you end up with two hardware threads that can run on a single core um, and they'll they'll share a bunch of resources so you never get 100 percent performance from either one of those things because they're sharing some stuff now both ps5 and series x and s uh, have a processor from amd that has similar technology but it's just way better than what you're getting from hyper threading on your pc so you get less contention but out of the box say on Series X, it doesn't enable this feature because a lot of engines are not built to make use of that many cores. Um, fortunately for us, we were really prepared for this. And so we, we literally could just flip a switch in the software to enable simultaneous multi-threading. Um, so CPU times on Dirt 5 on Series X hover around five milliseconds, something like that. It only needs to be 8.3 for 120 FPS. I've got loads of room left on the CPU mm. Series X. So even uh, at 120, you're not bottlenecked, huh? Absolutely not on the CPU, not bottlenecked at all. Um, GPU, we've got some optimizing to do. Um, mm -hmm. We have to learn more about how our RDNA GPUs work uh, yeah. and, and spend some time doing that. And that just unfortunately takes time. Uh, and I think that as a player, I think back to what were the games like at Xbox One on launch day versus to where we are now. And Killer Instinct is a really good example of this. Yeah. So Killer Instinct, I think, shipped at 720p. Yep. Um, then later had an update to 900. I think it eventually got, well, it's got a 4K update on Xbox One X. And seeing how you can learn more about the hardware and how you can work with those idiosyncrasies, idiosyncrasies about the hardware and how that shapes your development is really important. Um, so stuff like the fast storage on both platforms, how does that work in your engine and how do you get the data as fast as possible? Those are not hardware problems right now. They're all engineering problems. The, the hardware in both of these machines is crazy. It's mm -hmm. crazy fast for the storage. Um, so I had a demo early for direct storage on Xbox mm -hmm. and I could load 10 gig in two seconds. Man. 10 gigabytes in two seconds. That's insane. How Just could you even use that in a, in a game though? How could you even use that? How is that practically leveraged in a game without actually going out of your way to force it to be leveraged like in a weird way? Yeah, yeah. so 
uh, when I started in video games, I started on PlayStation 2. And this is all going to make sense in a minute, I promise. Um, <laughs> I started on PlayStation 2. And uh, the things that people don't realize about PS2 is if you think about GTA 3, um, big open world game, beautiful. In fact, San Andreas is obviously the same thing because same hardware, right? Big open world game. It has, I think it's four meg of video RAM on a PS2, four megabytes. And it has to have your frame buffer within that. So you double buffer a 64480, let's say, let's be generous and say it's interlaced. So you get, you've got to take a chunk out of your four meg and you've still got to fit all of the textures in that video RAM. How are you going to do that? PS2 had a ridiculously fast bus, just crazy fast. So as long as the data was available in main RAM, you could page it in and out of video RAM ridiculously within a frame. So this is the kind of thing that we're going to see happening now in next gen on Series X and PS5. That previously the bottleneck has been, how do I get the data on PS2? It was, how do I get the data from the DVD? PS3 and 360, how do I get the data from the hard drive? Now it's, oh, um, damn, I haven't got to worry about getting it from the NVMe because it's crazy fast. So if I want to update a texture in the middle of a frame, I should be able to do that. Now, one of the really cool things on next gen is I can say, um, I want to render a wall with a brick texture on it, but I don't have the brick loaded from disk yet. So I'm going to create the, the draw call to send to the GPU to say, render the brick. And whilst that call is on its way to the GPU, load the brick, send it to the GPU so that it's just in time for the call to be processed by the GPU. Now, no one is really ready to be doing that at launch day. Um, maybe Spider-Man, but it's a big engineering undertaking. So we're going to see a lot of that kind of engineering effort happen in the next year or two, and games are going to, I think, make a significant leap. So Do you think... Um... Broadly speaking, there's obviously there's three consoles. Do you think they're, they're broadly equivalent in terms of that capability? Broadly. <laughs> <laughs> broadly, yeah. But you wouldn't so, necessarily, so I know, you, I know you can't go too specific on it, but you wouldn't need to, to architect the game differently across those three platforms. I think, now, one of the things that we're going to need to spend some time as developers, as a community of developers, is working out um, how do we deal with data in a way that makes it small enough. Um, so I, I don't have inside knowledge about this particularly, but I've seen that there's been some reports recently about how Last of Us Part Two on PS4 and Ghost of Tsushima had a, a patch that would improve their loading times. Mm -hmm. And they suddenly got really tiny. I suspect that that's the nature of engineers have started looking at how do I improve my loading times on PS5? That has provided some new tools for them. Oh, how does that, how can we go back and retrofit that into some of our other games? Um, trying to work out how do we work with data better? It's all, it's not sexy stuff. It's boring, but how do I get my data small enough is going to really impact load times and therefore feature sets. So at the moment in Dirt 5, we load the entire track up front, um, which is why if you do a restart, it's just there. There is no delay. But if I could load, if I only needed 10 meters in front of me at the highest possible resolution, and whilst you're driving, I could be streaming in the other stuff. Hmm. I wonder how good the world could look then. That'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to touch upon generally more about, because I think I saw Dirt got involved in this whole, Next Gen has started and uh, quite naturally the conversation is always going to be about the comparative power between the two consoles. Mm. And, I, and you have been at the forefront of that discussion, uh, to say it mildly. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I think it'd be really useful for our viewers, or just generally, because you know we're here at launch now, hopefully there can be some disclosure. Beyond the spec sheet, what is the re you know what are you know on, on paper the X Series X is more powerful? What do you think that me translates to in the real world? Do you think that the power divide will be noticeable uh, or be inconsequential? Oh. 
this very NDA friendly <laughs> question. <laughs> I there's think... a lot to that too. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to it. That's what you can be suitably vague if you want, but more specific would be better. <laughs> I, I really think it, there are going to be trade-offs um, for the different platforms. So I think look if you look at just the spec sheets that the both of Microsoft and Sony have put out, in theory, the storage is faster on PS5, but PS5 has mm -hmm in theory, a weaker GPU than Series X. But then PS5 also has that thermal throttling stuff where it can provide more power to the GPU to overclock it. If you're using less CPU time and vice versa, you can overclock the CPU. And can you explain it. to us how that works? Like what, what options did you have as a developer there? I really can't speak about that. <sighs> that <laughs> That's right. information. Um, but yeah, it, I think it's just going to be a little tricky to answer that question, to be honest. I'm not trying to evade it because I think it is a good question. And even to speak about just the stuff that's available to the public, um, I really think it's going to be different depending on how you've architected your game. So to look at current gen even, it's interesting that stuff like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I think, performs better on Xbox One X than it does on the PS4 because it's architected around DirectX 12. But how clearly PS4 is no slouch. PS4 Pro is producing really incredible looking games like Ghost of Tsushima. Um, so it's gonna depend on where you apply your effort, why and how. I know there's a the lame answer, but... Um, I, yeah, because I, I thought it would be a bit of a wash based on just like my uninitiated non-technical brain Acer and dealer are the ones with the technical know-how but I just looked at the specs and I thought well 20% divide it's going to be around about then but it's not looking like that oh, through like of early doors I know it's not your game Devil May Cry even Richard Ledbetter of Digital Foundry and he was perplexed by it and he hinted at possible shortcomings with dev tools he said maybe there's uh, API limitations because he, he he said it wasn't the CP any bottlenecks with the hardware is is it? Is, do you think that's the case? Are Microsoft tools a little bit further behind than uh, Sony's? I think that's been said by a few devs. I mean, I wouldn't say that, uh, oh. but I think that that depends on your experience of which platform is primarily your your focus, right? Mm -hmm. So we're we're a pretty divided studio in terms of individually where do we want to what, what's our natural platform that we go to because we're a multi-platform studio. Um, so thinking about uh, tools, I, everything's coming in a bit hot, right? So yeah. these platform holders are trying to work out, well, what's the, the best way of delivering the best experience to the developers, to the consumers, providing all of the feature sets. There are gonna be bugs, there are gonna be issues. Um, I can't speak to what is going on with Devil May Cry. I've actually not had a chance yet to watch the Digital Foundry video, but I've seen some comments online about fluctuating frame rates for 120 hertz mode. Yeah. Um, again, 120 hertz is not a thing that we've been dealing with before on console. And honestly, I think pandemic has a lot to do with this. So even working on Dirt 5, trying to say, how do we test 120 hertz? The answer is, it's difficult. Um, for about, for most of development, we didn't have a screen that could do 120 hertz and HDR at the same time, so I hadn't seen it. Trust that it worked. Mm. Um, then one of the TV manufacturers kindly provided a, an early beta of their firmware so that we could see it. Um, because obviously all of this stuff is really new. So it's not like we get early screens before everybody else. Um, so it's, it's all coming in a bit all at once, right? I think any title that is shipping 120 hertz should be really, really pleased with themselves. Um, the, the difficulties of then going, okay, well, so I, I do a lot of the, the 120 hertz work on Dirt 5, um, and I have an LG CX next to me in the office. But then I go, okay, I'm, I'm happy with this. This is great. Now to say I do a lot of the work of 120 hertz isn't 
I yeah. set up some of the menus and stuff and look at the optimization and fiddle some stuff around in the frame. But really the smart guys in the graphics team, they're, they're the guys who are doing the brunt of that work. But I then want to go, okay, I need it validated. I need to get it to a QA person in the testing teams. They don't have 4K HDR screens that can do 120 hertz in their homes. How do we do that? Because typically you'd be in the studio and you'd, you'd have a couple of them and the people would share them because not everybody needs those things. So lockdown does provide some really annoying, um, and I think that that's borne out in all, all of the products, to be honest. Um, everybody's struggling with that. And we appreciate the patience of the players saying, hey, I've spotted a bug, just want to let you know. And, you know, we want to fix those things. We want to get back to them and, and get, it, get it to be the product that they, they paid for and that they wanted. And we told them that they would get. Um, but pandemic has, has made those things harder. Um, how much harder, I mean, in terms of traditional development, like you say, man, um, it's going to take us 30% longer to do X, Y, or Z. Like, is there a, a scale you want to put to that? Like, we're really, really working hard, and it, it's not easy to quantify that. Yeah, so it, it isn't easy to quantify in terms of time. Um, I think the bigger cost has been the mental health of developers. Mm-hmm um so oh. thinking about how it's much harder to put your work down when it's in your home yeah um so speaking to some of my team and saying to them look i need you to just stop working now and i need you to go downstairs watch a movie go for a walk whatever do something that's not thinking about dirt five and not talking to me about dirt five you can talk to me about anything else but <laughs> not yeah. dirt five yeah um that's that's tricky and um so one of the features in dirt five for example okay. is you can go to the garage and you can look at a car you can press r3 and you can pan the car around in your garage um and then you can press a and it opens the doors up so you can see the insides of the cars and all that kind of stuff that feature was never planned for the game it was because someone decided that they just wanted to do it because they were at home and had nothing else to do that's great it pr provided a nice new feature um thank you guy for doing that one guy uh, one guy did it yeah one guy did it he did it one evening lead programmer on the game team guy newbury smashed it but i would rather he was watching tv <laughs> yeah. his friends um trying to maintain a healthy work-life balance um don't get me wrong i'm happy that he did that feature i'm not trying to say i don't want <laughs> things in the game no. but I want my team to be healthy uh, and I want them to maintain their quality of life, to maintain their relationships, maintain their healthiness. Um, it's already hard as it is with, with lockdown. It's everyone's kind of, it's, it's tough, isn't it? It is, it is. And I think it's tricky as a manager to mm. keep track of all of these people whose faces I can't see every day um we obviously have catch-up calls every single morning but you can't see who's still working late at night um you can track you can because you can see it in the version control someone added some code here and there and go why why were you still working at three in the morning oh you know i just wanted to do this thing and that and you're yeah, such a but, nice boss my boss will be like, why aren't you working at three in the morning <laughs> well it, it's a marathon not a sprint right exactly so, um, and my people are really valuable to me and they're valuable to the company. And so, um, That's really good. I, I want them, I want to make sure that they, they, they like working at the studio. Um, one of the things that actually I talk about with the team and when we do interviews for like hiring people, um, I've worked at a bunch of different game studios and one of the feelings I have when I walk up to the front door, if I swear to myself, as I get out of the car, I know I need to go get a new job. Yeah. So I don't want to feel that way when I get to the to Cheshire studio and I don't want my staff to feel that way. I want them to love coming to work and love working on Dirt 5. So anything I can do to help them with that, I, I do want to know. That's a very positive outlook. In fact, that's kind of, there's this, this talk about crunch has been very mm. topical in the gaming industry. Um, what are your thoughts on it? Because obviously there have been some instances with Naughty Dog that didn't well received the whole notion of it. 
you know, CD Projekt Reg were rallying behind No Crunch, and then they un unfortunately had to do a U-turn on that. But I think they're compensating their stuff. What is your kind of it's a difficult question? But what's your attitude on Crunch? If you, sometimes it's needed, right? Or is it you trying to avoid it? What's your stance on that? I think obviously, obviously, Crunch is bad, right? But no one is going to go. Crunch is really great. But, <laughs> Uh, oh, I hope that's not turned into a gif. Um, <laughs> um, it won't. In the office. Uh. <laughs> I think that shipping a game is hard. There's always going to be something that you've got to get done at the last moment. Um, a guy named Nathan Forsyth, who's build engineer on Dirt 5, um, he and I worked through the night the day before we shipped on uh, Series X, I think because we, we desperately wanted to get a patch out, but there was something that broke in in something. It doesn't matter what it was, but there, there was something tiny that broke. And he and I literally worked through the night because if you don't get it done, all of the good work that everybody did for the last two to three weeks is not gonna make it because you didn't get that thing fixed. Yeah. And so things do come through a funnel. I, I didn't ask Nathan to work late that night. I would, I'm very grateful that he worked late, um, but. But your but funnel's upside you down because usually the funnel's like top down, like top and then down your filters down. That's where crunch is bad. Yours is where you feel the responsibility. You're the one doing the, the all nighter. I'm not going to ask my team to do something I'm not willing to do myself. Wow, I, okay. I'm not going to ask them to work longer hours. It, I've, I think I, I did, to my shame, I had to ask someone to work a weekend a few months ago and I felt terrible about it and they were very grateful about it, very graceful about it um, and and got it done. Um, but I was not happy about that. I do not want to ask people to do those things. Um, You're a great boss. <laughs> I don't know if there are many people like you that think that way. But well, really it's easy for many bosses in many industries will say, the people on my team are the most important resource and value in the business. To really believe that though is a different thing and you need to model it in everything that you do. Mm. So one of the things that we did at Cheshire Studio before we were on lockdown is that everybody has a monthly meeting on the programming team with their boss. Um, so the structure is I'm the technical director, there are three leads and there are three teams uh, in programming. And each staff member must meet with their line manager for a one-to-one -one meeting every month it's not a meeting about your personal performance it's not a meeting about are you getting things done there are two questions allowed to be asked how do you feel about working at the studio what can i do to make it better for you and that is it and we usually do these meetings in coffee shops we want to talk about what well, seriously what what's the problem like is there a problem if there isn't a problem great let's have a coffee we'll just chat about video games and go back to the office it's great but yeah you can't answer problems that people experience in development or in their life because if someone's depressed because of something horrific has happened to them in their life yeah firstly that bothers me as a human being um you know it's important to look after people people are valuable period yeah but it bothers me as an employer as well because I need to look after this person because if they they fall into some kind of mental health issue, they may end up leaving the studio. That's bad for them, for us, for me. How do I care for my team? Um, so I see it, I guess, as being coach manager rather than like in a sporting sense rather than a business yeah. sense. Do you think that'll be impacted by this? Um, so take two interactive acquisition. Mm. Does, that, does that i mean this is asa's question sorry but it's a good segue um uh, does it impact the mood of the studio uh does that so, the ability to do what you you're saying you do quite now for legal reasons i can't really speak oh, okay. that much about this um but i will say i'm very happy about it okay good um that's my personal view not the one of codemasters no one's fed me that line or anything like that yeah. but i'm very happy i'm looking forward to it i think guys that take two make great games they resource their studios very well i'm looking forward to it it's not like the the simpsons news anchor like welcome on you overlords 
<laughs> I have been making that joke. <laughs> um, you guys think yeah, your team will expand as a result? Sorry? Well, you think your team will expand as a result of this? I, I honestly have no idea. Um, it's really early days. Um, mm. And for legal reasons, we it's not like the whole team knew before the rest of the world did. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's... It's all new early days stuff for that, but I'm excited. I look at the games that the, that company makes, the way that they look after their staff and the things that they do to affect their local communities even. Um, I'm, I'm excited about that. That's good. Opportunities bring. If you're excited, then we're excited because it's always like when there's a big takeover, it's actually like, ooh, is that good? Is that bad? But, you know, big, big publisher buying or... It's, but mean, it, at the end of the day, I, I think it's, it's going to be a very different environment now that will inevitably bring some cultural change of some mm -hmm. kind because you can't you can't change all of the surroundings of a thing and then not have the culture change yeah um i think i, I can't remember the exact number that, that that is being talked about for this deal and i don't want to misquote it but you look at the value of take two and it's something like an 18 billion dollar company yeah that, that's going to bring some change and some of that's going to be amazing um i am excited about it yeah, it's going to be great. Um, let me quickly read this super chat. Sorry, guys. A shout out to the panel. Loving the ch tech chat. So it's a bit late. I've learned a lot already. So have I. Actually, I'm trying to, to you know, keep abreast of it. Asa and, and Dealer understand this like, uh, like it's nothing. I um, really wish you wouldn't say, like, talking us up as technical people when we've got the technical director of the studio here. Don't do no, that. but, but I, think, I think it's very <laughs> obvious on face value. You're the tech guy. I'm the... I'm, <laughs> on the face of it with the you have source. a hat yeah <laughs> yeah i have a hat on. you're the face uh, yeah <laughs> god's geek with ten dollars thank you so much great guy he goes you guys made an awesome game my first time playing dirt and i love it split screen career is whoop, gone incredibly fun thank you for your hard work um thank you god's geek for your comment five dollars <laughs> super chat from dark dodge night sorry i'm late been busy dealing with the kids i know i'm not a real gamer yes you are a fraud for taking care of your kids <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no, so yeah and um, um, again the tech chat i think it's good to have me as not non-technical because you, i i kind of need to understand you explain it really well i wanted to understand this thing about this whole business and you'll notice it's all about these catchphrases that are so prominent in the, the social media space this whole full full rdna2 business hmm. uh, like uh microsoft were you know uh, this is again another acer question but they, they blew their trumpets over this whole full rdna2 microsoft were, were latching onto this and i just wondered like is that a big thing is there an equivalent of that on playstation will that what what's the uh, you know is that a big deal for you as a tech director and for us as gamers. And gamers, yeah. Don't forget about mm. us. <laughs> I think it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have some performance impacts, of course. Um, something like this, um, I, I do love telling a story, so I'm sorry about that. No, no, so don't, don't. I used to work at Sumo Digital, and um, I worked on a title called Xbox Fitness, <laughs> which was uh, an Xbox One launch thing. Um, where Connect game. Pardon? A Connect game. It was a Connect game, yeah. yeah. And um, tried it once. At the same time, Sumo Digital were working on Little Big Planet Three for Sony. The same time, same company. Now, in that circumstance, obviously Microsoft going to be protective about their product. Sony's going to be protective about their product. And wisely, Sumo split the company, split those teams apart. We just said, look, you you are in different buildings across the street from each other you do not talk to each other you cannot share information about these things the end i, I know you two are married but you're not anymore right. <laughs> and uh and that was that was hard because obviously you had friends and, and things like that but you, you understand it and you're professional and you, you move forward and i imagine the situation for that is similar over at amd right you've got two companies uh sony and microsoft hey amd can you build us some hardware at that point, you would break off two hardware teams and go, right, you're going to do the, uh, the Microsoft one and you're going to do the Sony one. Do not talk because Sony want the best AMD stuff. Microsoft want the best AMD stuff. And as customers, they're saying, we, this is important to us and that's important to us. And so they'll have the hardware that's tailored for what they want from their platform. 
Now, there are pros and cons to that. So is the thermal thing on PlayStation 5, is that going to shake out to be a, a really big deal? Is the VRS per draw that's available on Series X and S, is that going to be the big deal? Um, I don't know. We're going to find out. For me, you look at the, the console, you look at the hardware, and you go, how do I push this specific piece of hardware as far as I can? That's it. It's just too early to say whether which one of those things is going to shake out the best. Can um, I just um, ask specifically, um, so Microsoft talked about it a lot more than Sony, so I can't ask the same question on both sides, but Microsoft listed four very specific features that make it full our DNA as far as their yeah. marketing speak goes. Um, we've got the VRS, the mesh shaders, direct text ray tracing, and sampler feedback streaming. Mm. How far along, in terms of working on Dirt 5, which of those features were kind of available to you? Or? All of them are available. So they are there now. We are seeing them. They're not in Dirt 5, but they are available mm. from Xbox. So we didn't... What were the four again? Sorry, VRS. VRS, sampler feed. feedback streaming, mesh shaders, and direct text ray tracing. Yeah, so... Um, we've announced that we are doing ray tracing with uh, AMD for PC. Cool. Um, we use VRS currently in Ooh. the Xbox Series X and S versions. Um, we don't use mesh shaders or sampler feedback currently. Um, I can't speak as to whether that will be coming in a future patch. Our graphics team are always, they got their fingers in many pies. And when those things are finished, they can make it into patches. So I don't want to make it sound like those things are coming, but it, it wouldn't shock me if they did. Mm. Um, um, do you know if the other platform, do you know if PlayStation has a VR? I expect Sony have their own version of it maybe or something, but do they have they confirmed anything like that to you? I VRS being available on the PlayStation 5, is that a thing? Do you know? Uh, I cannot comment on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can only speak about the things that they have spoken about publicly. Yeah, so, yeah I, I would be under NDA for that. I had to ask. I'm sorry. No, 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 it's fine. You can ask me anything you want, um, but I will obviously reserve the right to, <laughs> to know. <laughs> That's cool that you guys are uh, managing to use, uh, I don't know if it's VRS 1.0 or 2.0 or whatever, but it's really cool you guys did manage to put that into both of the systems for Microsoft to get in performance out of there. And if you guys missed it in the chat, Earlier, was talking about how they've optimized the modes that were there in preview and how they've ramped up the settings on uh, the game since. And, and I was one of the guys making a video beforehand, before the game came out, talking to, you know, you had commented on Digital Foundry's video saying, we've improved these builds already. And I uh, think, you know, this video was awesome. Thank you. But it should be better by launch, which was cool. Yeah. So one of the things that really upset me was that we, we got the build to Digital Foundry and um, I had broken something in the build. Uh, I, I broke the tearing. It was me. Uh, <laughs> I made it tear in the Digital Foundry video. And I I was really upset by that because we, we had the fix maybe a day before it, it went to Digital Foundry, but it just couldn't get to them in time because you have to go through quite a lot of processes to generate builds and upload and all that stuff. And you know, we know that when people are publishing their feedback about the title, that we're like, five to six weeks past what what people are talking about and that that can be real painful it is hard to not take that personally and um i think one of the things that was that's been very difficult for me in uh, five um i've been trying to up my social media presence i've been trying to talk about the game more and just engage with people and um i i track what's going on on I have the search in Twitter for Dirt 5 and I just look and I read every single post that is posted on Twitter about Dirt 5. Yeah. And, um, and so I'll, I'll reply and all that stuff. I, I want people to know that we're listening. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's hard to know, have we made a good game? Um, before we shipped it, it was really, really difficult to know. And even now I'm still not sure. And I can see the Metacritic scores. I can see the Open Critic. I can see people saying nice things and posting actually really amazing screenshots that I'm really thrilled with. But having that really get inside your head and know, did I ship a good game or not? That's actually really, really difficult. Um, and there are loads of things wrong with Dirt 5, tons that I'm constantly writing down feedback, constantly writing down notes for people and saying, well, we need to fix this, we need to fix that. But 
you, you can only do what you can do. Give me the address of the guy. I mean, who look, you, you got to pat yourself on the back too, because you, you shipped a game during a pandemic as well. Like it, you, <laughs> you really got to take it easy on yourself because you did something that one isn't easy. A lot of people still haven't done it. Games are constantly getting delayed. You guys mm -hmm. made it and uh, it ran, you know, it improves on the base model Xboxes and Playstations across the board. So. Again, yeah, and it's yeah. abundantly clear that you're your ha own harshest critic because it's been met positively. And we're, I'm, I'm really looking at Metacritic and all the reviews because Game on Daily is an aggregation platform. We collate reviews, and when we obviously the the talk of the 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 interview is always in the you know the four you know, what you know I was looking forward to Dirt Five, and it's like okay, we're going to have this guy on. What well, how's the game going to perform naturally? It plays in your head, and I thought. Oh, it's going to be really pleased. So yeah, it's really nice, nice to see your very really frank kind of disclosure on it. And but <laughs> you should be happy. I, yeah. I, and I mean, to add I'm to that, I mean, time with it, but like, it's. I think social media skews things a lot. Yeah. Um, and so trying to get um, an understanding of what what is the the real reception of this. Yeah. Uh, I was telling someone at the team. And, and I guess I kind of want to say this because I want people to think about what they write on social media. So yeah. I was telling someone, I was out at a coffee shop. I was at Costa Coffee, a place in, in England for those who are watching in other countries. And um, it was just before lockdown 2.0 happened. And uh, I'm getting a coffee and my phone buzzes. I pull my phone out and my notification says, Dirt 5 is shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm you like, turn that oh, off. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have swore on chat. But no, you can. Yeah, I swear. I was like, man, this is my one. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna drag your day now, man. Don't even, yeah, don't even bother with that kind of stuff. Like, you guys made it. You got it out. But Dealer actually did. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, up. Uh, you know, the official Dirt Five Twitter actually retweeted your video, Dealer, because Dealer broke down. What was it? You broke down. So. Someone uploaded. I just uh, look, and I, I don't want to bring up like any reviews or any of that stuff. Um, but some of the preview stuff was coming out. I, I feel like Dave was very clear on the early builds, and and I feel like that goes without saying. It's a pandemic. This game was almost a month before launch. <laughs> you had to get it through some kind of cert certification before that, surely. And you still had something out there for people to play that leveraged the hardware at least to some extent. And you know, you were very clear before that this is a rough build it still runs and has a 120 mode and all this stuff. And I just thought that was impressive while people did try to focus on a net like a certain outlets. Right. So I just, I just took David's comments from Twitter and uh, told everybody, look, dirt is uh, it's an early build and seeing that playing it for almost a month now at this point, like I've seen the various States where the game didn't have any sound except for yeah. the car noises or, yeah. you know, things like that. And I've seen how you guys have updated it. And I was like, man, did the graphics get better? What's going on? Uh, you know, uh, I was noticing these things that people like David were pulling the trigger on, right? So, um, <laughs> again, I, I just understand that the boxes, both of them, PlayStation, Xbox, they're both, I've said it forever, the most balanced systems of all time when it comes to consoles. And not only that, you got so much capability on top of what some developers might have expected, right? And I just feel like, you know, there's so much to be had there's so many games that aren't using velocity or or like dirt five you know using vrs or any of the other features that are kind of custom and that does include things like ray tracing which the he did say you know they're going to add ray tracing to dirt five as well which yeah. is cool thank you um i think that one of the things that we've we've not scaled well in the last couple of months was just the sheer number of systems uh that we had to deal with so yeah. um on Rush was the last title made at Cheshire Studio. Uh, I didn't work on that game, but it, it was shipped for Xbox One and PS4. And the most complex thing at the time was, um, oh man, there's these new systems, PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, and maybe we should target 4K. But now we dealt with Xbox One Base, S, X, Series X, Series S, PS4, PS4 Pro, PS5, uh, <laughs> PC, the various skews that come with that, and we have a coming Stadia version. I was going to joke about Stadia. You actually said it. <laughs> um, and every one of those platforms has two modes, quality and performance or resolution, um, that's completely tailored for that specific piece of hardware. And the next-gen ones have three. And at some point I was sitting with Steve and Taylor, the 
lead graphics guy and we were like man why did we do this <laughs> this is insane there's just way too many configurations mm. um so actually apart from xbox one and xbox one s they they are the same because mm -hmm. it's the same kit it's just the xbox one s has uh, hdr uh apart from those we, we were like we're taking this stuff and tailoring it for each platform and making sure that it's as good as we can. And I know, I know full well that we've not nailed it for each one of those. I get, you know, some people have messaged me saying it doesn't work quite right in performance mode on this track, on this platform. That's not to say that's not a legitimate complaint. That is a legit complaint. I will, we will go back and correct those things. There's just a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm pleased where we've got to. And for the last couple of days, I keep waking up in the morning. I'm like, oh, yeah, we shipped it. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> hey, in, in the oh, future, no. David, just, just turn up every setting to the maximum 60 <laughs> FPS. There you go. And scale the res as high as possible. One mode. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's. <laughs> We have a bunch of built-in tech to try and hit all of the different resolutions and scale some stuff back. So um, if anybody's watching the interview and they're um, a PC player, there's an option on PC for enabling and disabling our dynamic resolution mode. And what that does is we keep track of how well did the previous couple of frames do. And if you start framing out, we'll drop your resolution by up to 80% of the target. So that way, you, because when you're driving along at 100 miles an hour, you're not going to notice that the frame went like that and then goes back up again when we notice that actually you've got the room to get to it. Now, I know that that's not for everyone. And, and PC gamers, um, they, they have their requirements. They're just a different from a set to a console and so they they really didn't want uh dynamic resolution so we went in and added options for that um but that's a really helpful thing obviously in our internal tests we don't run with dynamic resolution so that we can know how far away we are from from hitting the target frame rate for every platform um but trying to correct all of those issues for every platform can be quite a lot of work mm -hmm. so it's a good fallback but not something that we particularly love uh, having to use. You must hate see, um, Sorry, Is the resolution dynamic on the console versions at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. And do you have? Um, so it must get even more confusing when you consider the variable refresh rates and things as well. And you, then you don't necessarily. Uh, want well, variable dynamic refresh rate is um, astonishingly easy to work with. Mm -hmm. Like really, really easy. Um, especially, uh, well. On Xbox, it's a very easy thing to work with uh, because you just enable it, it goes. Um, now, there is an API call that we can make to say, is VRR running right now? Have you Has the user actually got a VRR display? Because let's say that, um, I don't know, I don't want to pick a game because it would be mean. Um, let's say that David Springgate's RPG game has tearing. Um, and you're running it on Series S. If you have a VRR display, the VRR will just automatically kick in and fix that for you and smooth out those frames. But you can, as a developer, request, does the, is the user playing on a VRR display? And so if I know that, I could actually go, well, just turn off VSync then and just go for it. Just run for the, the highest frame rate that you can and maybe put a limit on that. So maybe I'll only want to run as far as 140 frames a second or something like that. Um, that, that could have pros and cons because it's, it's to do with input latency. Mm -hmm. And I think the input latency is one of the things that people are not talking about as much for next gen that they should. Um, so re-architecting the frame so that the input gets received and processed and sent to the GPU at the, at, as close as possible. Um, creates a game that feels a lot nicer um, and we did actually do quite a bit of work on that so i'd love i almost wish i had a build that didn't do it so i could see it side <laughs> by side um but yeah man the, the latency on series x and and s i mean the controller and the box both reduce it and it was instantly noticeable to me and i i feel that 
in Dirt 5, I mean, do you remember kind of tuning the frame for that? Is that kind of what you're referring to at all? Yeah, yeah. So I think on, on Series X, um, in some scenarios, we have uh, reduced latency by about 7 milliseconds, um, which that, that might not sound like a lot, but your frame in 120 hertz is only 8.3. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I can't remember the latency, the, the latency reduction in 120 hertz mode. It, it might not be 7 millis, but I have definitely seen those numbers. Um, it's how do, we, how do we give you a game that feels great? That, that was the only goal. It was actually Digital Foundry's fault. So um, I watched the video that they did about input latency, and I was like, I couldn't sleep. I actually went, okay. I went to bed, and I was laying in bed, and I'm like, damn it, Rich Ledbetter talking about input latency. <laughs> <laughs> Get up the next day, go to work. I'm like, right, got to do some input latency stuff. And I spent a few weeks on this. So thank you, Rich. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was well worth it, I think, because... I want a game that, that just feels great. Um, and I think that playing a game on next gen, they do look better, they do play nicer. How do we communicate better to players that they feel better? That's really hard. Because um, 120 FPS mode, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to have a go, but it it does feel really great. Um, I actually have a TV downstairs in my house that can do 120 but it can't do hdr at the same time and i love hdr and i end up sometimes just turning it off because i want to go play some 120 fps mode and now i'm trying to think oh maybe i need to go buy a new tv <laughs> look what i've done to myself i've made a game that requires me to go buy a new tv so. but a lot of people have to make those choices next gen it's really it's a weird one isn't it it's performance or frames they, uh, console uh, console gamers have this choice now so yeah so I'm luckily getting a TV tomorrow that can do both. Speaking of choice, though, and um, and actually, um, you were saying earlier about social media that you keep track of all the things people are saying, and you're not sure if you made a good game or not. I do recommend if you're not already reading some of the chat messages that have come through on this video. There's a lot of people that really like your game. Um, there are also a lot of people, or a, a few people, that are asking very specifically. I've got a PlayStation Five. I've got a Series X. Which version should I buy? <sighs> Can you speak to? Okay, it's okay. Like, which one I, I appreciate. To optimize the most. <laughs> I appreciate that's not a question you can necessarily say without getting in trouble. So, could you at least maybe? Are there any differences that we should be aware of between the two versions? Input latency, graphics, oh. whatever it may be. I'm going to go with a really lame answer and say you really need to go pick the one where your friends are at. Now, if you've got both consoles, or no you... friends. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it, it's a tricky one um, I've seen a lot of people say um, I want to pick up Dirt 5 on PS5 because of the, the haptics yeah. um, mm-hmm. it's really interesting to me because I've seen a lot of people uh, I hang out on various forums and I hang out on the Dirt 5 Discord um, but I've seen a lot of people say they really like the haptics on Dirt 5 uh, we're not happy with them so we're going to be revisiting our haptics even though I've not seen anybody say, I hate the haptics, we are, we are not happy with it. We're going to go back and redo it. I hear uh, really good things about that controller, by the way. Like, it really, the PS5 haptics are apparently pretty, pretty crazy. I can't they, wait. They are very impressive, yeah. Um, so we, oh, no, I'm not allowed to say that. They're very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, quick shout out sorry uh nano polymath thank you for the two uh, the two super chats he goes two technical minded gamers one technical director and a squeaky guy with a girl's voice with a unique technique wow. thank you nano <laughs> question for david oh uh, i think we've we've talked about um uh the full rdna too sweet but he does ask will a patch come later on to um to deal with the other bits that you haven't i think he's talking velocity architecture specifically Is he velocity? oh yeah velocity sorry um I guess I will say we we look at all of these things all of the time. Um, we're not going to be. I can't promise which stuff is going to come in future patches. Sure. Um, because we have to balance loads of different things. Um, that it might. That's the best I can do. Uh, in terms of like particularly fast storage on Series X, um, I think that hardware is great. I worked uh, on it with Microsoft early on and provided some feedback to them. 
um, and I looked at the speed that we could get from it, as I said earlier, like 10 gigabytes in two seconds. In my, in my personal early tests, it may well be able to do way better than that. And that was without the, the compression in the hardware. That was just raw. So why are Microsoft yeah. rating it at 20, you know, 2.5 gig and compressed up to almost five? Hmm. How is that? Is that through a memory multiplier effect of velocity? Was that running something through velocity? So uh, you, the way to get the most out of um, fast storage it, on all platforms is to make many requests at once. Hmm. So we think, I'm going to load a texture. Actually, you want to load 500 textures. Forget loading one texture. You want to load them all. So that then gives some challenges to how you lay out your data. You need to know where are they going to go in memory and what is it that you need before you ask for it. Um, that that's a challenge. Uh, it's not the hardware. It's, it's not the APIs from Microsoft or Sony. It's an engineering challenge for the teams. And we we're very close. We've done loads of testing, but it's not something I want to commit to saying is coming in a patch. It's, but it's something I'm very interested in personally. Hmm. You touched upon this with uh, Richard um, uh, at Digital Foundry. Um, about the Series S, and you guys were talking about, you know, whether this whole notion of it, whether it's holding back next gen. Mm -hmm. Do you think, uh, I mean, there, some devs kind of echoed some concerns about it, maybe because there's extra work, but do you think yeah. it will generally hold things back? Are you a little bit concerned about the RAM? The, what are you I'm about? not concerned, no. Um, so yeah. there's, there's some crazy customers out there that have both an Xbox Series X and a Series S, and mm -hmm. um, I think that's really cool. They would notice if they owned Dirt 5 that the Series X version is way bigger than the version on Series S. Yeah. You've just got more memory. And we don't want to fill up the Series S storage with data you don't need. So on Xbox, we make use of um, smart delivery where it will download the appropriate thing for that platform. So I think you get an extra 30 gig of high resolution textures on Series X over Series S. Um, now, I don't need to load those textures on Series S, it's, and it's got less RAM anyway. Did that really make a, a massive difference to how we made the game? No, mm -hmm. I personally did it in a day. It, it, <laughs> it wasn't difficult. And because of the way that we build our engine, we have uh, different configurations for all of the different platforms. We just had a different configuration for Series S. We then went through and tuned it. Really, when... As I told Rich in my talk with Digital Foundry, Microsoft came to me and said, look, there's a secret thing we're doing called, you know, Series S. I won't tell you the code name. Um, the, you should think of it as Series X, but run at 1440p. Okay. And so that's what we did. We ran it at 1440p. And obviously it's not as simple as that because we have lots of different configuration modes. So what resolution does it run at in 120 hertz? I'm going to let Rich figure that out and let you guys all know rather than spoiling it for myself. But <laughs> yeah, it, I didn't find it to be particularly a challenge. It was, um, it's all of the same code path as mm. Xbox. We didn't, we didn't have to do any special code for Series S. It just has a, a slightly different configuration. That's it. So you kind of just dropped the res, you ditched the assets that it's not going to need. I did have a question with smart delivery because that's something I saw you talking with uh, Nelson about. Now, you guys have gone the smart delivery path. There are other developers like, um, let's say, um, the, what's that game called? Crap. There's some developers that are basically supplying patches for the next-gen consoles, right? Like Observer, that don't actually use smart delivery. Um, what is the, is there a different path there? Why, why have they kind of put smart delivery and then some guys are not using it and still patching for free even? I don't know. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so I, don't, I just didn't know what the difference was. Um, it's, you had this thing called the the, the, the way you built games for Xbox previously was using a thing called the XDK, which is the, the development kit. Um, and then in order to ship an Xbox Series XS game, you have to use what's called GDK. Mm -hmm. And GDK games can also run, you can also make your game on Xbox One using GDK. And when just around the time we'd started Dirt 5, 
Microsoft were telling us, look, you know, we can't get you dev kits yet for Xbox Series X, but GDK is a thing and that will run on Xbox One. So maybe you should look at using that. And it was very early and it was, you know, it had problems because it was early, but it's really an entirely new software stack for Xbox. What was really cool about this was it made it more efficient on Xbox One. Original Xbox One now had more resources than it ever had before, which was really cool. I was really excited about this. It, I had more memory, I had more CPU time. It, it was cool. Um, but that's just how it works for smart delivery. Where you make the, the GDK game, you have to compile once for Xbox One, and then you compile against again for Series X and S, and you produce two two ISOs. They're not ISOs, but you know to try and keep it uh, clearer. Uh, you produce two packages and that's it. Um, so we don't have different code paths apart from in very, very extreme circumstances for Xbox One. Um, it, it was, honestly, it was, it was actually pretty easy. Um, yeah. That's cool. It helps you manage those different versions that, that scale uh, and they've incorporated the older console in there too, right? So that's really convenient. Yeah, it is. And, and I think it, it really, I think you have to think really broadly about well, what are the implications of doing this. So xCloud is a thing that people are excited about um, and they should be. Um, but xCloud is powered by Xbox One X hardware, right? Or is it Xbox One S hardware? I can't remember. Um, yes, just yes. to say, I have I have not been at the xCloud farm. I don't have any in, inside knowledge and all that stuff. It's One S right now, and they are updating to uh, Anaconda SKUs here soon. And they're going to run four instances of Xbox One S off of one Anaconda chip, basically. So there might be some Xbox One hardware around for a while. So it makes sense to make sure that it's easy for developers to make their game run on Xbox One. Also, when you're um, when you're working with that um, GDC, the game, the Xbox new one, um, yeah, is that build kept quite distinct from the PC version, or is there a lot of overlap there as well? There is some overlap. Now, some of that's historic, like historical for us. So, um, our PC build is primarily Win thirty two based, mm -hmm. um, and I think there's some some questions there. So. Like our, our Steam build obviously doesn't use GDK because it's a Steam game. Um, but there's still some overlap there that you, you can pull some things across. But again, it kind of doesn't make any difference because you couldn't have shipped a PC game with XDK anyway. So you can ship a PC game with GDK, um, but we're just not there yet. Mm -hmm. Are there features or things you would like to see in GDK that are not currently there? Yes, but I can't tell you about that. Okay. <laughs> that's something again that's what i've been tweeting about this for days talking about you know i'm hearing gdk is is it basically in its infancy and you know there's there's a lot of stuff left on the table there so it'd be cool to see how that i wouldn't improves. say it's like in its i mean it's in its infancy because it's it's new mm -hmm. but it's not particularly lacking it's um, not like bare bones no it's not bare bones they brought a lot of the tool brought most of the tools over from XDK in terms of the familiarity and how it works. And um, in fact, stability and speed improved a lot on GDK. Um, but yeah, the I, I'm very happy with it. If anything, we're talking about really small things that I would like, and I'm, I'm quite opinionated. And I, I have a weekly meeting with Xbox and um, my account manager gets a lot of feedback from me and, um, but it's, I, I'm actually very happy with it. I'm really thrilled. That's and good. I think that for me, the big thing about game development is not, are my tools really amazing? Of course, that's really important, but what's my relationship like with the teams that I'm dealing with? Are they able to take feedback? Are they able to help me out? Do they help me out? What resources do they give to help me? Those things are really, really important in helping to make a great video game. And um, I, I've enjoyed that with all of the partners that we work with. It's been really good. Total package, basically. You need, you yeah. need, a, you need kind of need everything. Yep, absolutely. I've, I've opened up the chat now, so I kind of want to have a look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to 
Yeah, someone's comments. GDK is just an excuse because PS5 is putting out the same performance on multi-plats. It's not that straightforward. You no. Know, so you've seen two games. <laughs> and uh, Optimization what? during a pandemic as well, as we've talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah. But either way, both consoles are going to be pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> I, I mean, do you, I mean, this is, again, uh, sorry, kind of almost retreading it. I'm expecting the Series X to kind of go... Bit further than the PS5, like as the gen goes on, we can talk about that. Like, just the raw specs. That's that's yeah. a big divide, no? Just like I'm just on the raw specs. I mean, Do you uh, to call Gazland where he talks about this stuff hardware wise. <laughs> it's it that there's a that's a significant power divide, no? Yeah. It it really does depend though. Like the, again, the the guys. Let's go back to that scenario we talked about before with the two teams, at AMD get split off. Mm -hmm. There's a conversation that's happened there between that team and the customer, Sony or Microsoft. Yeah. And, and Sony have said, look, we want this thermal throttling thing. How far is it going to push the hardware? Yeah. Because now that you've got so many hardware threads on CPU, you could churn through, uh, and as we are on Dirt 5, you can churn through code really fast. Um, that leaves me with a lot of headroom to overclock the GPU. How much further is it going to go? And the optimizations for that might be different because of the layout of compute units on on Series X and contrast. Um, so I'm just not sure. We're, we're going to have to wait and see. Full RDNA 2 oh, and AMD working together. Uh, my, my thought process was, well, there's a common programming language that PC and Xbox now share. I mean, not programming language, but... That, does that make the PlayStation 5 the outlier there? Then, if they're like kind of in bed with each other, well, they're all in bed with each other. Like PS5, yeah, it, from what I know, has the IPC of RDNA 2, it's just certain features they haven't confirmed, right? I, w I was kind of more curious about like the ray tracing side of things. You, since you guys did confirm you're bringing ray tracing on the show, right? Which is awesome, and fans should be pretty excited about that. I didn't know exact because uh, Microsoft had mentioned. And they, and they can talk about this. There's the equivalency, right? In a very specific scenario of 13 teraflops or the software ray tracing on top of the 12, like they don't affect each other. That's how they put it. Um, I was wondering, you could either slap that into ray tracing like Dirt 5 is going to do or games like Watch Dogs have decided to do. Um, but is there, do you see a world where maybe some developers can use that compute, right? On other things that they found a way to do that, like maybe hardware accelerated physics of some kind or, Something like that, something really neat. So I think the common um, misconception about ray tracing hardware is that you're you're only going to use it for ray traced graphics. Mm -hmm. um, and so your question's really great. Um, how about I want to I don't know do something really crazy, like have cra a crowd of a million people, but I want to have it so that they all bump into each other properly. Ooh. How could I do that? I want to drive a car into that many people. That's you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's the you got to show us. I hope that's not a guess. <laughs> uh, that's, um, how would I go about doing that? Is there something I can do with ray tracing to be able to do that, um, as well as using it for um, visibility lookup. So you could build like an, uh, a tree structure to work out what things should be visible from where you are within the world. Typically that's a CPU task, but if I've got some units sitting around doing nothing, maybe I could use it for that. Don't know. Maybe I could use it for sound and work out where I want ambisonic sounds to play. There's loads of different ways in which you could use ray tracing hardware. It doesn't have to be ray traced shadows and ray traced reflections. Because mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's been interesting for me lately is um, some people have been taking really great photos in Dirt 5, really amazing stuff in photo mode. And I've seen loads of people say, look at how amazing the ray tracing is in Dirt 5. <laughs> like, that's ray tracing, but cool. Um, and it makes me wonder, do people know the difference? Can they tell? Guys certainly can't. This has been a running joke. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we, have, we have what I think is excellent screen space reflections. And if you can't tell the difference, why am I going to spend all of the programmer time, the resources, actually the runtime performance on ray trace reflections 
is it just so that I can get in a digital foundry video and there's way to those reflections? Or do I want to use that hardware on something that's going to impact the gameplay in a more meaningful sense? Yeah. Um, Please do. We, exactly, right? So it, I think that we have to bear in mind the customer experience all of the time, not just what's the expectation, but how do we raise the expectation yeah. um, and deliver a game that's going to take that hardware and make something just just better, not just what you expect. Um, we've had um, we've had several months of every time there was any gameplay with a puddle in it, guys would start celebrating the ray tracing. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is cool, and it can be I, I used in different so. ways, like in different games, right? More effectively than others. Yeah. But if you were telling me that I could experience something like a console version, of course, uh, like in Biz X on, you know, GPUs on the PC, that's so much more next generation to me than ray tracing. And if some version of that would be possible thanks to that hardware, I mean, that would be game changing, I think. Yeah, I mean, there's there's like little standout moments that happened in the uh, in this generation of gaming where that really made me go wow that that was amazing and um i know that assassin's creed unity is not spoken of as being the greatest of assassin's creed games but because it you know to be blunt it was it was a little broken but i thought it was a very very fun game and the things that they did with their visibility calculation to work out how do we render all of the things because it's a really gorgeous looking game it was really punching way above its weight uh, in terms of the hardware um it it used all kinds of really smart gpu work to work out what should be drawn when um and thinking well how do i take that kind of work and apply it with ray tracing hmm i, I might get more for my frame um because really video games are a bunch of smoke and mirrors it's all real everything's there no actually if you if you stopped and turned the camera around there's nothing there and, and if you think about something like GTA, you've got really large buildings, skyscrapers and stuff. You have to work out all of the time, the building, do you need to draw the car? No. Well, what about when it pokes a little bit about a little past the building? Yes, now draw the car. So it, it's all about only spending the CPU and GPU resources where you absolutely have to. So having potential visibility systems like that is really, um, really, really important, especially with, with larger games. Um, we have some systems to do that on Dirt 5. I think we've got some things to, to improve there, particularly for next gen. Um, but you know, we're just starting out, so. Yeah. Um, uh. <laughs> this is an Acer, Acer question, because he's obsessed with VR now. He threw me <laughs> under the bus with the ray tracing. Uh, if I see a puddle in real life now, I think ray tracing. Uh, <laughs> it's so much that propaganda machine on ray tracing. I, th I, I, I also think it's like, well, the resources can be used better somewhere else. I want advancements in physics and AI, but uh, shiny things, are, well, what can you say? But going back to VR, um, uh, Dirt Rally 1 and 2 both had great VR support. And like, you know, cheat mode is third person view. We love cockpit mode, but true. I've gone to cheat mode, Gaz. <laughs> yeah, that's Ace's pr propaganda on me again. But um, VR, uh, you know, I, I love I love playing Dirt 5 in VR, uh, in not VR, in cockpit mode. I'd love to play it in VR mode. Do you is that on the cards or do you think about it? Are you thinking about it? Or you can't talk about it, which basically means yes. Um, I don't think it is on the table at the moment. If there is enough requests from fans to do it, then I think it's something we would consider. Um, the big issue is there there isn't a PS5 VR solution at the moment. There isn't an Xbox Series X and S VR solution. Yeah. Um, I think that I'm a VR fan myself, and I I have an Oculus Quest. I use that with Oculus Link and all that stuff. I think if we wanted to do something in VR, we should really look at Oculus Quest because I think that that's where mainstream VR is. Um, PlayStation VR with PS4 is, is obviously very cool, but going back to PS4 as we're all looking forward into next gen to yeah. do PSVR seems a little backward. I think that VR is in a slightly strange place at the moment. Um, it, would, it would have to be a significant 
the swell of customers asking for VR for, for Dirt 5, as well as you have to remember who who we're aiming the game at. It's not, um, it's just not aimed at the, the same yeah. customer as Dirt Rally. And that authentic first person, I am in the car feeling is something I would want to say, hey, Dirt Rally is, is for that. This is for having a great time with your controller lying on your back on the sofa. Uh, having a good time so yeah i wouldn't say it's on the table at the moment but i wouldn't rule it out if that's what the customer really wanted because it's a game for the customer for the gamer well, there's two of us so at least that's it i think we'll probably peek at that <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, we've had requests certainly okay. okay but it's not um it's not an outcry i, I think i would say you you mentioned that there are a lot of things for the game and it's kind of Bring it to an end. I know. I appreciate you've been here for a while. Um, and oh, just no, rushed. <laughs> yeah. it's, been, it's been great. I to address very briefly, if you wouldn't mind. Sure, sure. Michael Ellis in the chat says, "Does Series X really not support Rumble for Dirt Five, Michael? I'm really sorry. It does. It broke <laughs> it. Glitch. It will be fixed this week. I'm very sorry. Yeah, I had I had Rumble. Uh... Uh, last time I had Rumble was like two and a half weeks ago. <laughs> it came back and then it disappeared. I was like. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, um, it's it's coming back. Good. Cool. Um, what's? I mean, okay. You, I, I know your 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 PlayStation Five hasn't even launched yet, so you've got a lot to deal with. Uh, when do you start thinking about Dirt Six, or is that already something you have, you think about day one, or is there something you have a little sub board? Is how I imagine. Okay, shit, we didn't get this in. Let's <laughs> let this let's put this in for Dirt Six or. He probably yeah. just wants to go to sleep at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's ready. Uh, what do we... There, there's <laughs> a bunch of conversations going on about this, right? Oh, so, yeah. Um, are you literally thinking right now, are we making a dead six? Because no, that's what it looks like. <laughs> so we're, we're in a very different market now where games live a lot longer. So no one's asking where's Sea of Thieves 2. Yeah. But that doesn't happen. So should there be a Dirt 6? If there should be, when should it be? Or should we service the heck out of Dirt 5? Yeah. Should we at some point, you know, in a couple of years time get rid of current gen Dirt 5 and go fully next gen? Yeah. That's so something that the engineering effort perhaps means maybe we do need to do a dirt six and cut the cord do it i don't know but we're having all of these conversations we're talking about all of the features that we want we're talking about how do we pitch those there's you know there's ideas flying around but really um i think the the overriding sentiment is we just want to see how this lands what do people feel about it we really love playgrounds in dirt five we think that's a, a really big deal but it doesn't matter what we think it matters what everybody else thinks and we yeah. want to see what the the fan reception for that is and like we all really liked the ice racing internally people seem to be struggling with that a little <laughs> bit um i really like sprint racing almost everybody else is struggling with that including on the team much to my love um <laughs> but we know that there's some stuff we want to improve upon there's stuff that we're stuff that we want to improve upon right there's stuff that we look at in the game and go how do this isn't what we wanted Let's set that thing on fire and do it again. Mm. Um, there's some stuff that the community wants that we should respond to. Um, and we need to, to prioritize those, think about those things and get the answers out to them as fast as we possibly can. Um, but at the same time, deal is right. We need, we need a, little, a little sleep. <laughs> yeah, you deserve it. You absolutely deserve it. Um, Guys, uh, thank you everyone in the chat. If you have any more questions, do let me know. Dealer, do you have any more questions for David? Mm, I mean, um, we all know that these consoles are amazing, you know, uh, across the board. We say it all the time. A ton of balance, a ton of performance coming to everybody from all platforms. And uh, playing Dirt 5, seeing how far it's come already in, you know, uh, a couple of weeks, right? About a month. Uh, I can only imagine you guys are going to keep optimizing, keep going. And seriously, shipping a game during a pandemic, I think that's what that's what we're seeing with Devil May Cry. We're seeing that across the board, and uh, there's a lot of even the 1,400 man studios are are you know they're they're having issues. And uh, what you guys have done? Five is about 
uh, 70 people. Exactly, right? And uh, that's, what I, that's what I was saying during the, you know, some of the, the preview stuff is, is these guys are not the same size. They don't have the same resources. They're not, they're not X, Y, or Z, right? They're, they are Cheshire Studios, and, and they made the best-looking dirt game of all time during a pandemic. And uh, you guys continue to, to unroll those updates and, and fix the things that you, you find along the way. But yeah, I mean, I, do you, I mean, I guess I could just start by saying like, we all know there's no real bottlenecks in these new consoles, but seriously going throughout the years, when you guys really start to take that game design concept and scale it up, are you excited about what you know is possible maybe on something that you can build from the ground up with game design in mind? I am very excited about next gen hardware. Very, very excited. So when I, I don't want to be disparaging about the current or previous now generation of hardware, um, but going from PlayStation 2 hardware for me was incredible. Then moving to PS3 hardware was ridiculous. I know a lot of developers hated working on PS3. It was very painful, very odd. But once you learn how to make that thing work, it was a beast. Um, <laughs> for, for reference, go and look at Metal Gear Solid 4 on PS3 because it's insane. Yeah. And Xbox 360, again, also a beast, but in a different way. And so you really have to think, how are we going to make these different systems work? When we got to PS4 and, and Xbox One, I was sad because it was like, hey, here's an AMD chip. <laughs> and yeah... It was interesting to a bit, but getting to push that hardware was not as much of a challenge as it had been previously. And, and I enjoy the challenge, to be honest. Um, and so thinking now, well, how is it that this direct storage, because the thing with the direct storage, the NVMe and uh, fast storage on PS5, that doesn't exist in the PC space in the same way. I know that the new GTX uh, 3 3090s and 3080s, I think, have the little chip to be able to do it. But there's going to be some challenges there. How, how are we going to let that impact our, our engineering pipeline to be able to deliver a game that is just throwing more assets at you all of the time? And what, what does that mean for it? So if I could, let's say I have um, 16 gigabyte of RAM, Let's say I only have, I don't know how much is available on each console. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but let's, for argument's sake, say that I have 15 gig available for me as the developer. If I want to fill 13 gig of it with the top detail textures, the only the ones that you can see on screen, that would be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But is that possible? I don't know. But I want to find out. I want to see how using this hardware, how fast can I deliver texture to the screen? And what does that do to my resultant image? And maybe I want to do more interesting stuff than that. Maybe actually I want to use information stored in data that, on the disk to help out AI or to help out physics or visibility information. It, it's you have to cut the cord then, surely you have to cut the cord from last gen. I'm a massive fan of cutting the cord of last gen, as you can tell. I... Well, you see, the problem is um, it's sales at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, we could have brought Dirt 5 out as being a next gen title and we could have really knuckled down on just doing Series X, Series S and PS5. And obviously we had to spend a lot of resources on making it work on PS4 and Xbox One. But I can't remember how many PS4s there are. It's like 40 million or something. I don't know. Oh, but really? <laughs> what? That's even crazier than I said. <laughs> 100 million. PS4s, right. yeah. 100 million plus. Yeah, yeah more than that's a lot of sales. But that, but that really makes you think about the potential of xCloud because you, as a developer, don't have, how, don't, you don't have to worry about that as much going forward because you do have access to a lot of people through their mobile device. You make the game for the Xbox. It automatically runs on xCloud with no extra work from you. You know, yeah, like, but it, it's a catch you? To problem, right? Because people aren't going to go to XCloud without the games, which wonderfully it does have because Game Pass is obviously awesome. But it it's also I can't start tailoring my stuff away from say Xbox One hardware until it's all gone away. Mm -hmm. uh, we need a hundred million PS fives or a hundred <laughs> Xbox Series Xs. Um, yeah, it, it's too many customers to ignore and. It, it surprises me that 
you know so many people are on those platforms but i guess people hand them down right you know and yeah. and not all not all gamers are the hardcore gamers they're not the people hanging out on forums and youtube and they're certainly not using the hashtag dirt five or whatever on twitter so yeah, yeah. no okay well i think that wraps it up before i say um uh, let the gentlemen do the outro. Thank you, everyone uh, in the chat. You've been very civil, surprisingly. Um, it's been really good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for their super chats. Shout out to the mods who are doing a great job as well. Isla and uh, Lupa, you're lovely, and all the mods. Um, before we go, I'd like uh, I'd like to do outros. David, can you? Uh, everyone knows who you are, but um, where can people find you on social media? And yeah, what plug in dirt? Cool. Uh, yeah. So. I'm always happy to take questions from anybody. Uh, if anyone wants to reach out to me on Twitter, you can get me at, at David Springate. Um, obviously, Dirt 5 is out now on every platform, apart from PlayStation 5 in Europe, which will be launching next week. Please pick it up. Um, but if you already have Dirt 5, I want to say one of my favorite features that I, I think that people are sleeping on is that you can change your name in the menu. Um, so I have mine set to Badger. And so every time I boot up the game, uh, Troy Baker says, welcome back, Badger. And, and I love it. So make sure you check that out because it makes me laugh every time. Um, the true Baker is in the game, which a lot of people don't know. Yeah, I, I love that feature. And um, one of my friends has said his name to Spanky every time he signs in. Welcome back, Spanky. And I think that's really cool. Um, so yeah, check, check out Dirt 5. I think it's a really fun game. Um, if you want to see how good it looks, check out hashtag Dirt 5 on Twitter and look at some of the photos that people are, are posting because they, they, the photos sell it so much better than I could. Um, it is. It is a sick game. It's a brilliant game with a great soundtrack. Doesn't that doesn't the soundtrack yeah, yeah. get enough mention? And then that soundtrack. Yeah. I, I had no involvement in the soundtrack, and it it kind of turned up one day because that's how development works. Oh, hey guys, we're just adding the soundtrack. Boom, and it's just there. Oh wow. And then <laughs> the licensing department. We have a weekly meeting. The whole the whole team get together and we share what's new. And the licensing department were like, oh, yeah, so we got the soundtrack and we signed up these different bands and we signed up Pearl Jam. And I, and I literally was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we got Pearl Jam? Because I love Pearl Jam. They're my favorite band. And um, so every time someone says about the soundtrack, I say, yes, we've got Pearl Jam and Stormzy and Chemical That's Brothers, yeah. all these other great artists. And um, yeah, the soundtrack is great. And actually, you can check the soundtrack out on iTunes and on wherever it, it, there's a separate dirt five soundtrack available on spotify and oh, you can get the artists on there so can i see the soundtrack of troy baker and saying all the names welcome back spanky <laughs> <laughs> you know maybe uh, i should ask for that <laughs> what i really liked was um there, there was like a radio conversation uh, in between levels and it mm. went on for ages and i was just i was just sitting there listening to it and I thought, wait, hold on, is this is this a real radio station? I still don't know the answer, by the like, way. Wait, they actually recorded all this for this. Wow. Yeah, like it was for ages, for ages, and most people might skip on it because they just want yeah. to get into the game. But I was just like, this is crazy. Is this a real radio? But whoever whoever features in that, they did an amazing <laughs> job. Yeah, the North and Troy Baker. We, we partnered with uh, a podcast called Donut Media, um, and they themselves were were involved with voice recording with Troy Baker and Nolan North and so they're doing the interviews and we had a couple of racing personalities in there as well um and our script writers helped them out some of it you know they they worked in a bit more um ad-libbed if you like uh it I, I like it I, th I think it's good fun um it w we need to do some work on that though because I it, one of the things that happens is as you say you're sitting there listening to it and you're going this is great I want to go back and listen to it again so I, th I think we need to look at adding a feature where you can listen to those things but um no promises but it's on our list yeah it's really good i, th I think it'd be a shame if people can't listen to it because I, 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 I almost skipped on it but i held on <laughs> and i'm listening to the conversation i'm like is this a, is this a real radio station because they delivered whoever deli delivered it delivered an amazing job yeah, yeah I, I really enjoyed it it was cool yeah it was I, I actually didn't hear it in development because i don't play through the career in development yeah. I'm only playing for performance, so I boot up into arcade. And so when I got my copy, I went home and I was like, right, now I'm going to play career. And I'm like, wow, what is all this cool stuff? And I, I had no <laughs> idea, so it was cool. That's sick, that's sick. Dealer, you are the main man. Tell us mm -hmm. 
where people know where you are. No, but, David's uh, the main man. What are you talking about? <laughs> you're always the main man. Uh, no. And uh, David's the main man as well. Um, De- Dealer, where can people find you? Um, uh, and yeah, thank you. Again. I want to say thanks to you, buddy. Uh, great show. GameOnDaily.com. Check it out, guys. If you haven't, hit the like button. Share it to somebody uh, you might care about. And Asa, of course, uh, running everything and putting on such a, uh, a great show. Uh, and seriously, David, thanks for joining us. It was uh, awesome to hear you talk about your experience uh, throughout the pandemic, how you know the game is being optimized and has been optimized to make it look even better since the preview stuff. And I'm glad that Rumble's coming back because uh, oh, my hands have been a little, you know, still <laughs> running over all these. I, I'm really happy to hear that and that you guys are always taking in the feedback. You do need to turn off those notifications about Dirt 5 having or being trash or whatever you said that guy said because that <laughs> is no way to live. You, you you did something, again, that a lot of developers, much bigger developers are having problems with, and that's, you know, putting the game out during your pandemic. So uh, the chat applauds you, we applaud you, and uh, while playing the game in preview, it's come so far, which, you know, I was, I was thinking, you know, man, this issue, this issue, but always sure to state that this is not final hardware or final product, and it definitely is that the game already looks a lot better. So thank you. That's very kind. For, uh, Let me tell you one more story before I go, because I do love a story. <laughs> go ahead. Um, Microsoft, who have been a very great, uh, helpful partner for us, um, they have a system called the Take Home Program, where they get early hardware for Xbox Series X and give it to their employees to take home. And they let us put out Dirt 5 to their Take Home Program like two months before ship so that we could get feedback. And so some of the, the great help that we got from those people just telling us, you need to tweak this, you need to do that, we're getting a crash here, as well as we get literal performance and crash information from that during development, it was super, super helpful. Um, yeah, and, and actually having people like yourself that are involved in the uh, early builds was really, really helpful and helpful for our encouragement too during lockdown because we got builds out to people with the playgrounds early demo and we had a, an early playable in October last year or something like that. I can't remember, but it was awesome to one night I sat in the office with a pizza and watched discord just explode when we announced playgrounds and yeah, it was, it was great. So thank you very much for your encouragement. It's really appreciate it. Oh, again, thanks for, thanks for coming on and uh, more developers, you know, like yourself, hopefully uh, come out and talk about the great things that are coming because there's a lot. And, and, and again, for those watching, you can catch me at dealer gaming on YouTube. Uh, and of course at dealer underscore gaming on Twitter and great show guys. Okay. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure, everyone. Thank you again for joining us, David and dealer. Thank you. It's been an absolute honor and pleasure. I could talk about this for hours, but I'm conscious that not everyone can, <laughs> but thank you so much guys. Make sure you like and subscribe. We've got. Where can we find Asa at Gaz. Yeah, Asa. Where can people find you? Sorry, I always forget the outros. He always reprimands me for this. Go on. No, I, for, <laughs> for this one occasion, I didn't actually mind. I was happy to just sit quietly and let that one pass. Um, but now you've done it. Here I am. Uh, yeah, you can find me Asa underscore Game on Daily on various platforms, streaming channels, all the rest of it. And I would like to second what Dealer was saying and just thank David for um, and your whole team for producing a great game across so many platforms in a very difficult time. And I've been playing it a bunch since it came out and it's great fun so people that are watching you flipping pick it up <laughs> no no no, i didn't flip i let gaz hold the controller for that brief uh, um, uh-huh. yeah, right. <laughs> and yeah thank you dealer for coming along with some good questions as well and mm-hmm. everyone enjoyed the, the chat so that's it that's all i've got thank you everyone um and again david your i just have to quickly say your attitude to running a team just generally as a work ethic is amazing it's just amazing. I don't think that's very common. The fact, the way you think, you perceive your staff, it just comes across as genuine and sincere. I wouldn't say this at the end if I didn't think it was true. Um, and I really do applaud applaud you for that. You're just a genuinely good human being and a good boss. And the work shows and in the game, you deserve all the success. Your team deserves all the success. So thank you so much, honestly. Um, thank you. That's very appreciated. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. Make sure you like and subscribe. We've got some sick content, just like Next Gen. We've only started warming up, so make sure you subscribe. It's going to get better. Peace, peace. Take care. Thanks, guys.